Well, hello, crafty friends, and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Hannah, and I am from the Doodlebug in Jasper, Indiana. We are a real life brick and mortar um, paper crafting store. You know, one of the one of the few left, and this is my YouTube channel. So I will occasionally post different technique videos here. Um, we do daily by you know every other day lives in the store. Some of the new products that we're getting in, I will also post those on this channel as well. And today. What I have to show you is um, from Pink and from Pink Fresh. So Pink Fresh does some really amazing stamp stencil die, and some of them have washi tape as well too. Um, so we're going to be doing a stamp stencil and die set today, and I just want to kind of show you how those work. Um, I will apologize for the lack of light in here. So I'm actually traveling and I'm at a trade show right now in Las Vegas um, and it's not my trade show. So um, I don't have to be at the trade show during the day, but I get to enjoy Vegas in the evening. So just to get a little bit of work done, I have been shooting some videos, doing some samples from the hotel room. So I'm kind of at the mercy of the light in the hotel room, which is not the best. So hopefully you guys can see it well enough though. So what we're going to be doing is a layering stencil set so I'm going to show you that so I already have my piece of paper cut um, to card front size so four and a fourth by five and a half um, and I have taken a little bit of purple tape and stuck it onto the back you can use spellbinders tape as well you could use a post-it note tape whatever you want to use here that is low tack okay so it's not going to damage my paper um, and I left it hanging off the edge a little bit so I can stick my stencil on there and it's going to hold my stencil too. So the first thing you're going to notice with these is that the stencils do have a little number in the top left hand corner. So this one says stencil number one and you can see I even went across there with a little bit of sharpie and then kind of or a black marker and rubbed it off just a little bit and that way I can see which stencil it is a little bit easier. Next thing right here in each corner is a little etched in um, kind of crop mark um, and what that is for is so you can line up your paper with those marks okay so I'm going to bring this up just so you can kind of see it a little better there we go so I'm going to line it up there we go getting camera Hannah there we go I'm going to line it up with that and stick it down there we go all right, so I've got my, and you can see now I am again working on the desk and it's kind of a nice, like almost granite material, but it is very slippery. So I'm gonna give it just a little bit of tape on the back so it will hold down for me. At home when I'm working on my craft area, um, it's not gonna, you know, it's not gonna slide as much because I use a, um, just a non-stick mat. Okay, so I'm gonna just pull out my little pink fresh stamp pads here. Um, it looks like for the yellow, we've got one, two yellows. So, um, good rule of thumb, whenever you are doing any kind of layering stencil, your bigger layers are going to be your lighter yellow colors. Okay, so I am going to, let's try, Let's try this one here called Sweet Mustard. And this comes out of the Rise and Shine inks. Um, then I just grabbed some inks before I left home. And I am going to take a little scrap piece of paper. Okay, and just make sure my ink, my ink br blending brush is actually clean. I am using some ink blending brushes that I've had forever in my stash from Pink and I um, think pink, who, who did this? Now see, there's so many, um, pick a fence, there we go. Cause I'm like, I know it's a P and an F and I'm, and I could only think pink fresh. No, that's not it. Um, pick a fence. They are one of the first ones to come out with blending brushes. 
kind of basically revolutionized so much for us, right? Okay, so then once I have some ink on my brush, again, if I'm at home, I've got a little um, nonstick mat that I can rub the ink onto because once it goes to the paper, you can't use that ink anymore. Um, so I know a lot of people will, will kind of rub off but that sucks all the ink out. And I don't really want to do that. I want to disperse it. So get a little like mat that you can work onto or work on your craft mat. And that way you can disperse that ink nicely and still use it. Cause this ink now it's, it's done. It's gone. It's in the paper. It's, you know, I can't pick that ink back up. And now I'm just going to Start to fill in my stencil. I'm just doing little swirls. That way you it's a little nicer and more even. Now since I don't really have that craft mat, if you see I'm, I am kind of swirling here and then bringing it down. I didn't do that over here and that's why that's a little bit darker. But friends, don't stress over that. First of all, we're doing flowers. Flowers in nature are all different colors anyway. And a little variation is good. I might even do that on purpose up here. Get these a lot darker. There we go. All right, so there is stencil number one. I'm gonna gently pull that off. There we go. I did have some pixie spray on the back of this and my pixie spray is really old and I didn't clean the tip out so when it sprayed it didn't do a nice fine mist it did kind of a gloopy schmuck right there um, and I should have cleaned it obviously I'm kind of bad about cleaning things Okay, I'm gonna line this up, but it's not gonna matter with our finished product, so I'm not too worried. Now, I am going to go up to the next color now, darker, okay? We wanna go darker, um, and I wouldn't even necessarily need to switch my brush because we're still working with yellows. If I was gonna switch colors, maybe, but we are not switching colors. Again, get some places just a little bit darker. Kind of making our own depth and shadowing. All right, so there's that one. Pull those all to the side now, because those are our only two yellow ones. All right. Oh, look how fun that's looking. I do think I need to add a little more right there. I don't know if I missed or what. Or if it's just because I went a little heavier in a few other spots. There we go. Now I just feel like I, I need to make everybody a little darker now. Okay. Just call it done. Sometimes you just got to call it done, right? Because we can keep fussing and fiddling with things forever. Oh yeah, much better though. I like that much, much more. Okay, so there's those two. Now I'm going to move on to stencil number three. Again, I'm going to line it up. top one didn't quite line up, which meant one of my bottom ones was off. Okay, so I'm going to pull it up so I can see it better. So I'm lining it up in all four corners. Okay, looks good. Bring it back down. Now these are going to be my greens. For traveling purposes, I um, put my greens 
with a little rubber band because I noticed the other day when I opened up, I'm checking to make sure this guy is clean. Yes, when I opened up my kit that I had this in, um, sadly, the lid was off of one of these guys. So he's a little, little drier than what he should be. So if that happens to you, you know, what, what do you do? So your options are um, Ranger, make something called an ink refresher. So that's what I'm going to try first for this little guy since when I went to pack, I discovered that he was, I had it in like a leather little craft tote and I noticed that the lid was off and who knows how long it had been off. So I'm gonna try that. And then you can also add reinker as well too. So normally, you wouldn't have to do all these layers on here with the green, but like I said, this little guy, when I went to pack him at the house. Now this one here, notice how it's got that nice little detail one right there. That's why I'm swiping down on it and not the same swirl that I've been doing because I want that to stay laid down real nice. My hand's gonna be tired by the time I'm done with this one, I'm trying to layer up all my green. So you can totally fast forward if you need to, just to jump ahead. Sorry, I guess I have to watch that. I do hum to myself sometimes whenever I'm crafting. I guess mainly I sing a lot too, but usually have music in the background. But you know, that doesn't really bode well when you are trying to shoot a video and have a bunch of music in the background. I can actually hear housekeeping in the hallway. I was kind of worried that you guys would be able to hear that. All right, I think, I think we've layered it up enough that we can actually see it. But okay, so what this also shows you too is that if you have a really light green, just keep building it up, okay? So that way, you know, you can get the green that you want. I'm using an ink pad that's is kind of light, but also it's it's dry. Um, it needs to be either re-inked or refreshed. <gasps> Beautiful. I'm loving it. All right, set these guys to the side up here. When I'm done, those will go into the sink in the bathroom. And I will just wash them with a little bit of soap and water. Okay. All right. Again, don't need to change brushes because I am sticking with greens. See, look at the difference. So much juicier. some of that color that's left on the mat here around all right there's that look how pretty that is all right now the last one is um these little cattails and someone did not pack brown. So I'm gonna see what colors I have down here. I've got black. I really didn't want to do black, but I do have a gray. So maybe I will do gray. I was gonna stamp it in a gray because I thought that I forgot to pack my big. Let's see. I've got a gray. should have seen me so like I said I'm, I'm traveling and um, I 
cute. I, I had two suitcases because we flew Southwest and you know, one, one for me and one for my craft supplies. And so of course my, my craft supply one was like right at the 50 pounds I brought with me. Um, I brought my glimmer machine. I've got my Spellbinders Platinum 6 with me. I've got, you know, inks and, well, I've got dyes. So I'm, I'm working on um, Spellbinders and Alt New and um, who else was there? Lawn Fawn. They did kind of a virtual craft Oh, I guess you could call it like a trade show um, for retailers and I wasn't able to do it whenever they did all the live videos because that was the same week that we were doing our big secondhand sale at the store. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to Vegas. I'll just pack all that with me. Oh my gosh, you don't realize how heavy metal dies are <laughs> until you have to put them in your suitcase. So yeah, it, it, um, it's kind of funny. I have a um, hundred pounds of luggage that um, I've been lugging around and mainly it's this mount that I have to use. It has a huge weighted base. I bet this little booger is almost 10 pounds. All right, so let's see how gray did. Oh, gray does not look bad at all. That looks good. All right, so at this point now, friends, if we wanted to, we can leave it as is. But they also have a stamp set that matches it, okay, like so. See how that, and I'm just kind of eyeballing it and lining it up, and it looks great. All right, so what I'm going to do, take this up, peel this off the back. It's sticking more than it should. Go this route. There we go. Be nice. Release. I should have gone that way, and I know better than that. Rather than go this way, because there's a cut mark there where you could peel the fibers up, start from the other side, and that way, whenever you bring that pressure across, it's less apt to tear it like I started to over here. Okay, little trick there for you. All right, so now I'm going to get my stamp platform. the side. Oop, that's already sticking. Okay. Pop this in here. And this one is underneath there. It's my little. Okay. Just going to see if I'm still in frame for you guys. A little bit. A little bit still in frame. All right. Now, there is a top and bottom to this. So what I'm kind of looking is I've got two little cattails and there's two, I guess they're not cattails, they're probably buds. I don't know why I'm calling them cattails. They look like cattails. And then I'm just going to line this back up. And again, friends, if it is not 100% perfect, it's okay. That was looking pretty good though. I'm trying to you know, and I bet that if I would have done those buds just a little bit darker, or they would have been that brown, that would be a really good reference point to line up with. Okay, now I'm going to move this to the middle. Haha, -ha, there we go. Okay, just do that, pull it back up. All right, and then let's see how this little black ink pad does. Oh yeah, it's nice and juicy, yep. Now, I often get asked, um, you know, when people are buying stamps and and their ink pads that they feel like because they have a large stamp, they have to have a pad that matches it. That is not true. You can use any size. It's just going to take a little bit longer with a little one. But sometimes I do like that whenever you're using a stamping platform because then that way... Um, you don't get any gook on the side. I didn't even pack my stamp smoothie with me. I've got a little random stamp here too. Oh, I need more pressure. Because I did not get a good stamp on that. Okay, oh, that looks good. I'm gonna do it again though. Because 
I've got some light areas here for sure. This is the beauty. of using a stamp platform because you can go back, stamp again, kind of like how with my, with my green that was too light or just getting dried out, I can, you know, kind of how I kept going back and hitting it again, kind of the same thing with this. I can hit it again, still a little weak over here. I'm surprised those guys let me put them so close together. a little better. Oh, much better. That's what it needed. Just that direct pressure. Okay. Looks good. I'm happy with it. So now what, what can we do? Um, so, well, I probably shouldn't have just, so if you just close it up like I did and you get ink in the bottom down here, you can clean that with like rubbing alcohol or baby wipe. I'm going to leave it open though now. All right. So next thing they have is they do have a die set that matches this. I'm going to pull that out and we are also going to align that up like so. Right, and then that purple tape that I had. Get a little piece of it. Now, here's the trick with that though. So I just spent all this time coloring this. You may not want to stick that purple tape on to what you just colored because it could pull some of that color up. So I'm gonna put it in here into the middle because that's gonna be waste anyway. Grab my Platinum 6 here from Spellbinders. These will go through any die cut machine though, okay? If I just pack the Platinum 6, it folds up. So because it folds up, I knew it would take a little bit less room in my suitcase, which would make it a little bit easier for me to travel with. And then I'm just gonna run this through. And of course my handle's on the other side because let's make it as awkward as possible, right? We did. <gasps> Looks amazing. How fun is that? I do have kind of a little completed sample to show you as well, too. So then what we did is we just mounted it. This is a background plate. Um, this is one of the things that are in the set. So there we go. Quick and easy little card. Um, so with me even talking, um, and you know, we'd have to run this one through, but you can mass produce these so easily as well too. Um, just a fun little technique. And if you are a colorer, you know you're not gonna be able to color this whole card start to finish in less than 20 minutes. So really, really fun. Again, this was using the Pink Fresh Lily Frame Set. Okay, so Lily Frame Dies, the Lily Frame Stamp Set, and then also the Lily Frame Stencil. So just a quick little tutorial on how to use the layering stamps, or I'm sorry, the layering stencils. Um, and then, you know, a couple different ways to work around whenever you've, when you've got some boo-boos and some, some challenges there as well. So hopefully you enjoyed the video today, everybody. And um, again, I'm Hannah from the Doodlebug in Jasper, Indiana. I will put the links to the products that I used today in the comments below. So that way, if you just, you fell in love with this Lily Frame, wonderful. I would greatly appreciate um, if you would order it from us. And then also I did use the Pink Fresh. I don't remember what set these came out of, but Pink Fresh does these great little minis. And I do like them because it takes a lot of the guesswork out of your layering colors because they've already got them monochromatic for you, which is what is really, really nice. So until next time, my friends, I'm Hannah from the Doodlebug in Jasper, Indiana. Make it a great crafty day.